بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه وما تدري به ذا أما بعد I'd like to welcome you back to the last session إن شاء الله in our uh, a workshop which I pray to Allah that, that would benefit us from it إن شاء الله عز وجل so we're still discussing the second sign of the major signs of the hour which is the Dajjal what is our responsibility when we hear of him coming out should we take our AK-47 and go to fight him or swords or or what the Prophet said alayhi salatu was salam and this is the order whoever hears of the Dajjal he must stay as far as possible from him because a man would come to see him thinking that he's a believer and he will follow him because of the many doubtful things that he presents to them and this hadith is extremely important not only in the Dajjal in everything that is dubious in everything that may test your Iman. I see so many people face doubts and trials and put themselves in places of fitna head on. And when you tell them, Akhi, you're a famous da'i, you're a good student of knowledge. Why do you do this? Said, I have strong Iman. I can debate, I can argue. I can research and unfortunately some of them end up flipping, losing track. We heard of some of the brothers who were students of knowledge, did a lot of research and work and translated books, ended up in supporting the Darwin theory. After being so Salafi, so strong in Iman, ended up supporting Darwin theory of evolution what more kufr is there so always put this at the back of your mind do not test your iman brothers say i have strong iman i'm righteous i'm practicing i know i can give da'wah to women so they give classes to women the women are not fully covered they chit chat, they do the shaitan is pulling his leg. I know of a sister who is half of the Quran fully, and she used to do da'wah on the internet, on blogs, etc., and in forums. I think they have, and she used to say, I give da'wah reminders to people, and she used to be warned by students of knowledge that this is inappropriate restrict your da'wah to your gender don't mix and she says no 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 I'm, I'm doing this few months later she fell in love with someone who is not even practicing and he's happy because he says she guided me to quitting smoking and now I don't even play music he's a musician but I want to do this and I want to do that and she is a practicing woman and they want to get married and her father refused and he talked to me I met the man the man is a total waste yani, a drug addict he used to be still have his friends from that community but look what happened to that girl why because she said I can withstand fitna no one can withstand fitna and this is why you have to keep your distance if you hear of the Dajjal don't say I'm a strong believer of Allah of the Quran of the Sunnah nothing can harm me no the Prophet tells you stay as far as possible even if you have to run to the mountains and hide in the caves the Prophet tells you and of course if you were put in a position to meet him, then recite at him 
the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf, the first 10 ayahs of Surah Al-Kahf, inshallah, this would protect you. How would the Jazakallahu Khayran? How would the Dajjal die? A question came before the Salah. Is the Dajjal alive now? We said that. That in the hadith of Tamim al-Dari, the Prophet told us that he is chained and in an island. So all these years, he's still alive. How is this possible? Is he jinn? Is he devil? He is human. How can a human live for 15 centuries? Who gives life and takes it? Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah Azza wa Jal is the giver of life. And I did not want to go into details, but there is so much to it because there is a confusion among scholars whether the Dajjal has appeared at the time of the Prophet and the Prophet interviewed him and spoke to him or he is still the one on that island chained. The, scho the scholars and even the companions were split. Umar ibn al-Khattab used to swear by Allah that the Dajjal is alive and that the Prophet met him and his name is Ibn Sayyad who was a Jew but then accepted Islam and if we go into details it's going to take a little bit more time but in the beginning the Prophet Islam did not have revelation so he thought that Ibn Sayyad was the Dajjal and the Prophet used to hide to hear anything that he says so that he can judge him and he met him and he interviewed him and there were so many things but again we don't want to go into details because this diverts us from and the time is limited so the Dajjal is alive and the Dajjal is a human being though he claims that he is God and that, though he has so many miracles why would Allah give miracles to a prophet we know so that the people would believe the prophet but if he claims to be a prophet and then he claims to be Allah and Allah gives him these miracles then why this is part of the testing Allah told you that he's a liar and he never claimed to be a prophet he claims to be a God which is far greater so there is no problem in such tests how is he killed we know that for certain he is killed by Isa ibn Maryam. The Prophet tells us that it is Fajr time when Isa descends. The Imam is Al Mahdi. When he sees Isa coming, descending with two angels, <laughs> what would you do? Tell him, he will go back. This is Isa. But Isa, peace be upon him, says, it was Iqamah for you and you lead and the prophet told us that this is the honor of this religion that from our religion someone leads the prayer with Isa praying behind him and then he goes to meet the Dajjal accompanied by 70 thousands of the Jews and they all have swords with them the moment the confrontation takes place and the Dajjal sets eyes on Isa, he begins to dissolve, to melt, to become like salt. The Prophet says, Islam, if Isa would have left him, he would have disappeared and dissolved. But then the fitna would be bigger because people would say, he is God. He cannot be seen. So Isa runs towards him with his spear. He stabs him, killing him showing the people his blood on his spear as for the and this happens in palestine babel lud and the seventy thousand jews what will happen to them they will start to run and the muslims would start to follow them to kill them they hide behind rocks and allah makes the rock speaks oh muslim come behind me there's a jew a tree would speak except the trees of al-gharqad these 
kind or type of trees are specifically uh, associated with the Jews and this is why in Palestine they say they grow enormous amounts of it because it would not yani, uh, uh, blow the whistle on the Jews telling the Muslims come to kill them. The third sign is the dab. Allah says Azza wa Jal wa ida waqa al qawlu alayhim akhrajna lahum dabbatan min al ardi tukallimuhum anna al nasa kanu bi ayatina la yuqinun. This is the ayah mentioning the dab in the Quran. So it is in the Quran. Is the Dajjal in the Quran? Huh? Is he ever mentioned in the Quran? Hinted in the Quran? Not at all. Does one come and have the audacity to say it's not in the Quran so we reject it? This is the trend nowadays. Can you attack the Quran? No. I'm a hypocrite. I'd like to undermine Islam. What to do? If I attack the Quran, you will kill me. You will say he's a he's a, a, a heretic. This is blasphemous. Mm, what to do? What to do? Attack the Sunnah. But if I attack the Sunnah in general, also you will kill me. So what to do? I say, oh, listen, the Sunnah. There is Hadith Sahih. There is Daif. But if it is not in the Quran, then we do not accept it. It has to be in the Quran and the Sunnah. And this is how you dismantle Islam bit by bit. So you end up people saying, Dajjal is not in the Quran. I don't believe in it. Some people would say, we will come to this. Isa ibn Maryam dissension, descent to earth is not there. I don't believe in it. Tawheed, Aqeedah is not in the Quran. I don't believe in it. A'udhu Billah. But where are you going to? The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, I have been given the Quran and the Sunnah similar to it. I would not want to see one of you leaning on his couch saying what we find in the Quran, we accept. What's not in the Quran, we reject. No, I was giving the Quran and something similar to it, which is the Sunnah. So be careful of anyone claiming to be a scholar and rejecting things from the Sunnah on the grounds that it's not in the Quran. So many things are not in the Quran. The Quran is a general book, not details. In the Quran we have Fajr two rak'ah, Maghrib three rak'ah, Asr four rak'ah, no. In the Quran do we have Zakat is 2.5%, sometimes 5%, sometimes 10%, sometimes 20%, different types, categories of Zakat. Mentioned in the Sunnah, not in the Quran and the sky is the limit. Allah says, and when the word of torment is fulfilled against them, we shall bring out for them, uh, or we shall bring out from the earth a beast to them, which will speak. So the Dabba will what? Will talk. It's an animal. There's no need for Dr. Doolittle. It's an animal that or a beast, it's not even an animal, it's something out of the kind. It's not a mammoth, is it a dinosaur, is it a lion? We don't know anything, but it is a beast with special powers. It speaks to the people, it warns the people, it advises the people, it gives preaching to the people. Allah says, a beast which will speak to them because mankind believed not with certainty in our ayat. So it will preach them, telling them, listen, this is what you're doing. Now, we know that it is a great, huge creation of Allah Azza wa Jal that comes out when the people are corrupt, in bad times. Speaks to them, preaches them, it hears, it speaks, and it brands. You know when you have a cattle and you brand it, this brand, this beast does it to the humans and especially on their noses so that people would distinguish a believer from an unbeliever. The Prophet said when the dabba, when the beast comes out, 
it will brand people on their noses and those branded will live for so long new generations come and then people the new generations would say i bought a, a, a camel i bought a ride a horse so the one says who did you buy it from he said i bought it from one of the branded men so this is all what we have about the beast it will come at a time of corruption it will speak it will advise people believers would be increased in iman this is what the prophet said this believers would say this is a freak this is possessed by jinn this is something out of this world we still don't believe this is the norm number four the coming or the rising of the sun from the west every single day the sun rises from the east except at the end of time when the sun rises from the west we have posts on whatsapp saying that nasa has discovered that the rotation of the sun is do which means that the sun will yeah this is nonsense we believe that this is nonsense don't believe in whatever nasa says to you because we have the Quran and the Sunnah. They might be right and they might be wrong. But why do I postpone and delay my Iman until NASA believes in it? Until I get the reports from America. And for example, this is coffee. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu salam, and the hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, when a fly falls into your drink, do not throw it away. Dip the fly in your drink again. Because under one wing, there is illness. And under the other wing, there is cure. People, 50, 60 years ago, scholars of Islam, I don't want to give names, said, what kind of hadith is this? This is nonsense. Islam is a religion of cleanliness. This is dirty. I will do not believe in this hadith and the Prophet cannot say such a hadith. It's in Bukhari. He said, even if it's in Bukhari, I don't believe in it. 15, 20 years ago, there was a study, I think it's in Michigan or in Harvard School of, uh, of Science, proving this through scientific fashion and means. Bringing test tubes and measuring the amount of bacteria, etc. And they've discovered that once you do this, it eliminates the illness and the disease. The same scholar said, okay, if it's proven, aman to billah. Why is that? Because there's a U.S. seal of approval. Muslims don't do this. Muslims abide and believe because it came from the Quran and it came from the Sunnah. Likewise. Allah told us that the sun will come from the west at the end of the time. <coughs> we believe in that. Allah says in the Quran, do they then wait for anything other than that the angels should come to them or that your Lord should come or that some of the signs of your Lord should come the day that some of the signs of your Lord do come no good will it do to a person to believe then if he believed not before nor earned good through his faith say wait you we too are waiting chapter 6 verse 158 the, the prophet told us salam, that this is a sign and it's mentioned in the quran referring to the rising of the sun from the west we believe that this will happen once it happens your repentance cannot be accepted Khalas, it's over so once you see it coming from the west you say i repent i ask allah for forgiveness allah will not accept this from you because this is the the last limit the deadline for repentance number five of the signs is the coming of isa ibn maryam peace be upon him the coming of Jesus Christ Allah Azza wa Jal 
told us in the Quran, and this is why the Muslims believe that Jesus was not crucified and that he was not killed. Rather, Allah uh, ascended him, lifted him up to the heavens while he was alive. Anyone doubts this? No. Does any quote unquote scholar say otherwise? I don't know of that. Allah says in black and white in Quran, but they killed him not, nor crucified him. But the resemblance of Isa was put over another man and they killed that man. And those who differ therein are full of doubts. They have no certain knowledge. They follow nothing but conjecture. For surely they killed him not, but Allah raised him. So if he's not crucified, he's not killed and Allah raised him. Doing what? This is what we will know, insha'Allah. Um, okay. And Allah says, And there is none of the people of the scriptures, but must believe in him, the son of Maryam, before his death. Now, before his death, the death of Isa, or the death of the people of the scriptures. So, the most authentic is, before the death of Isa, meaning that when he comes down, all those of people of the scriptures will believe in him before he dies, before Isa dies. And Allah says in the Quran, and he, quote unquote, Isa, son of Maryam, shall be a known sign for the coming of the hour. So these verses mention the coming of Isa. Now one of the brother, brothers is telling me that there is a quote unquote scholar saying that there is nothing to prove Isa is coming down at the end of time. The ayahs in the Quran, we may say it's debatable. It's not clear that he is coming. What will you do with the Sunnah? Now this is where people come and undermine the Sunnah. If I manage to tell you that this is not from the Sunnah. Authentic Hadith, Bukhari, Muslim. No, 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 no. I don't accept it. Then you open the door for me to say, why Maghrib three rak'ah? I don't accept it. Make it four. Even number, even number, odd. Even number, even number. Why? Make it even as well. Why two, four, three? You're confusing me. And we come to Hajj. We come to fasting. We come to Zakat we can manipulate and change the whole religion because it's not in the Quran and the Sunnah is debatable so we what we want change and make it ba'if not acceptable very very dangerous this is why we are known as Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah we abide by the Sunnah we understand the Quran we understand the Sunnah through the understanding of the favorite three generations, the generations of the companions, of the tabi'een, of the tabi'i tabi'een. We don't understand the Quran with our own whims and desires and yeah, this is clear. No. What did Ibn Abbas say? What did, what, why do I need Ibn Abbas? Because he was the cousin of the Prophet He was a knowledgeable scholar. He knew Arabic better than you and me. And he was close to the Prophet. He would ask him. So he has more knowledge than you and I in understanding and by following the mainstream, you are in safe grounds. When will Isa descend? We spoke about that. Fajr prayer, when people are there after beating and are victorious over the Christians. So now they're resting, they want to pray, they hear about the Dajjal, they're looking forward to fighting him when Isa comes peace be upon him. Now, a lot of the Muslims are confused. Yesterday, Shaykh, you said that there is no prophet after the Prophet, right? He is the seal of the prophethood. So how come that Isa is coming back? Now, if there is no prophet after Muhammad, 
what is what what is Isa coming? Is he coming as a normal human being? No, you cannot strip prophethood from a prophet. You cannot say, okay, he was a messenger for five years, but then he quit the job. This is for life. You're a prophet. You're a messenger. So what we what do we do with with, with Isa? Uh, the Prophet ﷺ told us that if Musa were alive, he would not do anything but follow me. The Prophet was angered when he saw a piece of the Torah with Umar. So he said, what is Umar? He said, it's a piece of Torah of the Old Testament. I'm just, you know, curious. I want to learn. And he was outraged. He took it from him and he said, if Musa was alive, he would not do anything but follow me. Don't play in Allah's uh, uh, religion. So Isa is the same thing. Quran is the last revelation of Allah Azza wa Jal. There is no law after the Quran, no revelation after the Quran. And Islam is the dominating religion until the day of judgment. But Isa would come, the Prophet says, by who my soul is in his hand, yani by Allah. Isa will soon come down and he will be a fair and just ruler. He will, one, break the cross. So anywhere you find a cross, he will break it. He will kill the swine, the pig. Okay, Sheikh, can we kill pigs now? No. It's an animal. It's haram for you to eat. But you're not allowed to kill it. When Isa comes, he will do that job for us. And he will cancel the jizya. The jizya, we spoke about it yesterday. It's the money taxation taken from the non-Muslims. Ah, oh, Sheikh, wait a minute. Canceling the taxation. Isn't it canceling part of the religion? Yes. But is Isa the one who did it or the Prophet told us that it will be done? It's a Prophet, then it is part of the religion that at this time it will be cancelled. And the Prophet said that money would be so much available that people are giving charity and no one would accept it. To the extent that one prostration of an individual would be for him better than the whole world. Come, Akhi, I will give you a position. I will give you land. I will give you money. I'm praying. He refuses because he sees that the end is near and nothing helps except being righteous. How would people live in the era of Isa, peace be upon him? The Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, magnificent things. Cobras, scorpions, insects and animals with venom, it will be taken out from them to the extent that the infant child will put her hand or its hand in the mouth of a snake and nothing happens. There's no poison in these animals. And a child is thrown in front of a lion and the lion doesn't do anything to it an infant and the wolf would be with the sheep as a shepherd the wolf is taking care of the sheep so things will be so prosperous so safe so peaceful so secure that it is so strong the uh, strange the prophet said والسلام, the people would not farm they will just address the earth grow and all of a sudden, the earth grows so much barakah. And the Prophet says, alayhi salatu wasalam, that the pomegranate would suffice a group of people, one. And the head of the pomegranate, you know, the one that has like uh, the crown, if you cut it, the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, they can stay under its shade. And it is so huge in size one fruit and the prophet 
is telling us about the milking of the cows and of the camels and of the sheep that one milking of a camel or a cow could suffice a full tribe so yani it is beyond imagination the way of blessing people will get how long will isa reign and stay on earth 40 yes. years the jail was 40 days so this time is a time of prosperity peace no fighting no the prophet says the hatred and enmity would be extracted from the chest of people so imagine there's no hatred no courts no fights no swearing for 40 years peace no united nation huh? inshallah so uh, uh, this is the t of course it's this time of peace if you look what came before it you would say well i keep this peace for you i don't want to see the trouble that came before that because i don't know if i'm gonna pass this exam or not number six yeah juju ma'juj gog and magog they are mentioned in the quran yes they're mentioned in the quran in their uh, 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 in a couple of places one of them is surah al-kahf which we read and what dhul qarnayn did with them and building this barrier this dam made of copper and iron we believe that they are in this confinement of theirs in their jail or whatever you can call it since very very long time and you're talking about 300 400 years it is stated in the old ancient books that Dhul Qarnayn was a just and fair ruler he's not Alexander the Macedonian no he's not he was a contemporary of Ibrahim peace be upon him so he is he goes really really way back at time as historians say but we don't have any authentic information about this so we know that this barrier is built and we know that there will come a time when they will come out now how many are there the, uh, the, the their number is beyond count the prophet والسلام, told us that they are at the east of us where in east people say china chinese are coming in and out you have no problem they have to be what underground because we i, I will explain this later on as for their numbers the prophet tells us that allah azza wa jal tells adam and he says adam and adam says labbayka wa sa'dayka this is a phrase stating that uh, uh, your wish is my command say whatever you want so allah tells him get from your offspring a division for hellfire so adam says what is the number what is the percentage i don't know and allah says from every 1999 in hell the, uh, the prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, at that moment the infant's hair goes gray out of fear and, 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 and awe so the companions said O Prophet of Allah which one of us can be the one in exchange of 999 the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, have no fear one from you 999 from Gog and Magog which means that their numbers are beyond imagination and there are a number of interpretations to this hadith and another hadith which stated from every 199 1,000 1, 99, 999 and from 199 this is a big percentage why I will not go into details one of the opinions stated that the number is not significant meaning when i say 99 of, of every 199 this can also be included in from every 1000 
99, but there is a big gap. Other opinions stated that 99 to 1 is only Gog and Magog with the Muslims. 999 to 1 is Gog and Magog along with the disbelievers of all other humans to the Muslims. And there are different interpretations. Don't yani, bother yourself a lot with it because at the end of the day, inshallah, we're saved because of their uh, uh, number. When will they be admitted out? The Prophet tells us, since they were jailed, every morning they wake up, they dig and dig and dig until they have this small opening and they see the sunlight. But it is already the end of the day. They want to rest. So they say, tomorrow we will come out. And they don't say, inshallah. And when they go to sleep and wake up in the following day, it is all back as it was. So they start digging and digging and, and this is repeated every single day until Allah allows them at the end of time to come out. So when they reach this small hole, they would say, tomorrow we will dig it out, inshallah. And when they come in the morning, it's still there. So they start to dig and they come out. And the Prophet told us والسلام, that when they come out, their, their amount, their number is so huge that they pass by the lake of Tabariya and it's called Galilee Lake in Palestine. So huge, so big, but their amount is so great in number that when they pass by this lake, when the rear of the army comes to the lake, it finds no drops in it. And they tell one another, we heard that there was water in here. Imagine how many of them be able to consume all the water in this big lake. Allah tests them. They're so arrogant. They're so powerful. They're so strong that they hold their bows and arrows and they shoot the heavens. And the arrows come back dipped in blood. So they said, okay, we killed the humans, we killed the earthlings, and now we've killed those inhabiting the heavens. Fitna for them. And they spread corruption in the entire earth. Now, Isa managed to kill what? The Dajjal. And the Muslims now are safe from the Christians. They're safe from the Dajjal, but they can't fight those so Isa and the Muslims and the, and the believers they run to the mountains fleeing them and then Isa peace be upon him asks Allah Azza wa Jal to save humanity from them so Allah sends a worm that goes into their necks and that would kill them it's a special uh, um, a sort of epidemic that kills cattle usually but this goes straight to them and they die in their billions it kills them all now when they're killed and dead they stink like anything dead and the whole world is filled with their dead corpses and Isa asks Allah Azza wa Jal again to save the world from this. So Allah sends special types of birds with necks like camels that takes them and snatches them and throws them in valleys and places far away from the population. The Prophet tells us وسلم, that the Muslims use the bows and arrows and spears of Gog and Magog as wood for fire for seven years. Now you do the math. What amount of wood they had left behind. And after that, Allah Azza wa Jal orders the heavens to rain. And the rain cleanses 
the earth until it is like a mirror, clean, pure and shining. And this is when a new era begins of peace, prosperity and the likes. We come to signs 7, 8 and 9, landslides. We do not know, we don't have information, except what the Prophet told us, there will be والسلام, a landslide in the east, a landslide in the west, and a landslide in the Arabian Peninsula. Now, we can think, but we don't have any information. What would I think? At the end of time, where is America? Trump is dead, madam. Where is America? Where is Europe? Where is Scandinavians? Where is China? We all see that the focus is in Syria. The Armageddon or the great battle, the dissension uh, the, of, of Isa, the, the Jeb, everything is happening in this area. But what about the rest? Allah knows best. One might say, maybe the landslides in the east takes care of all the non-Muslims in the east and the landslides of the west takes care of those in the west and without a, a, a fossil fuel, they will have no means of survival and they will become extinct, maybe atomic bombs, nuclear warfare, uh, 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 chemical warfare that takes care of them all the focus would be only in this area that we live in. So we cannot elaborate more. Allah knows best. The final is the fire that resurrects people. This is the Arabic word, tahshur. And this is not the resurrection after dying. Resurrection after death is different. This is simply driving people from their homes to a sham. Some of them would be riding in comfort because they love Allah, they're believers. Some of them would be swapping turns on one camel, up to 10 people. And some of them will be consumed by this fire until they reach uh, 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 Bayt al-Maqdis where there will be the end of all, uh, uh, insha'Allah. Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, may Allah have mercy on him, said, Islam will be worn out like cloth which has, which has drawings or embroiderments on it would be worn out bit by bit until it disappears. Until people do not know what fasting is, what Salah is, what Hajj is, what charity is. And overnight, the Quran will be uplifted from earth. Nothing would remain from the Quran on earth. Not even a single ayah. And even the elders among the people would remember and say, Oh, I remember that our forefathers used to say, La ilaha illallah. This is the only thing that remains from Islam. No Salat, no Quran, no Dhikr, no... They say, I remember. Long ago, our people would say, La ilaha illallah, and this, this is why we say it. And this shows you how Islam would, at the end of time, demolish until the Day of Judgment is called upon the worst of the worst. No Muslims among them. And Associated with this would be this wind coming from Yemen, which is softer than silk, that does not leave anyone with an atom weight of, or an ant weight of Iman in his heart, except taking its soul. So no believer with an ant weight of Iman in his heart would live. This beautiful soft wind coming from Yemen would extract their souls and even if they were hiding in a cave 
in a mountain it will come and take their souls the prophet says so that only the worst of the worst would remain who do not know anything about right and wrong and the shaitan would call them to worship idols and they respond to his call and they will worship idols and they will be so prosperous in wealth and health as a test from Allah Azza wa Jal so that they think that they are doing all of that uh, 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 in thinking, being deceived, being tested by Allah that Allah would not give us money, would not give us health if we were doing something wrong, then worshipping these idols is good and this is when the day of judgment would take place on these people. Now with this, we come to the conclusion, to the end of our workshop. As I've stated, this is a concise way, but inshallah, this is the most authentic of hadiths there in the sunnah that we managed to compile. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that He makes me and you steadfast on Islam. I pray to Allah that He makes me and you among those knowledgeable so that when we see the signs, we are increased in our Iman, in our belief, and in staying committed and steadfast on Islam. Hada wallahu a'lam wa nisbatul ilmi ilayhi aslam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabiyina Muhammad.